Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mohammed Kantawi and I am a university teacher in Wurgla. In today's session I, sh I shall be talking about phonetics. It's about the lessons at university or at École Normale Supérieure. I shall be talking about the types of phonetics, which are three, and then we shall be focusing only on the second type, which is very important and somewhat difficult for students to understand. And so what is first, what is phonetics? How do we define phonetics? Phonetics is the scientific study of the physical properties of human sounds, and that's phonetics. We have got three types of phonetics. We have got acoustic phonetics, articulatory phonetics, and auditory phonetics. What are these? Acoustic phonetics is about the waves in the air. It's about the study of the waves in the air. When I say something, I try to analyze it th through the waves in the air. That's acoustic phonetics. And it, also it has got to do with how can the room or the place that you are, for example, filming in or speaking in, how can it be conducive to speaking? And that's, that's acoustic uh, phonetics. The second type is about articulatory phonetics. And I shall be talking about that later. The third type is about auditory phonetics. It's about how listeners can perceive the sounds, how the sounds come to the ear and the listeners perceive them. Do I perceive p as p or b? And what is the difference between them? And so let's now focus on articulatory phonetics. Within articulatory phonetics, we shall be talking about articulation of vowels and articulation of, of consonants. Within articulation of vowels, we should be focusing on the tongue, on the tongue. And so, to speak about the vowels in phonetics, uh, we have got seven short vowels. We have got um, five long vowels, and we have got eight diphthongs and five uh, triphthongs. Lo short vowels do not take much time to pronounce. Long vowels do take some time to pronounce. Diphthongs is a combination of two sounds together, one gliding into the other. And the triphthong is three. From the word tree, it means three. Three vowels together. And there are, there are only five triphthongs, particularly in British accent. Um, the vowels can be directly studied by knowing the properties of the tongue. When we speak about the tongue, we have got the height of the tongue, the advancement of the tongue, and the roundedness of the lips. And so within these, we shall be talking about those sounds. Let's take just one example. Let's take E, long E. Long E is a vowel sound. It is long first. And it is pronounced as high. How high? It means when, it, when I pronounce E, the tongue is high, not low, or middle, or in the middle. So the tongue is high, not low, and not in the middle. Um, and this E is front. It means when I pronounce it, I feel that my tongue is advanced forward. E. And this E, which is long E, is tense, not lax. So we have both. We have tenseness and laxity. How it is tense? It means when I pronounce E, I need a, some kind of muscular effort to pronounce it. So it is tense, not lax. It's somewhat, somewhat difficult to pronounce in terms of the energy in your body. Not like the lax sounds, which are easy to pronounce. And when we speak about the roundedness of the lips, when I pronounce the sound E, do I find my lips rounded or no? Surely they are not rounded. E. There's no kind of roundedness to the lips. Unlike O. Now, O, you find your lips rounded. So the, the, the sound O, the long O, is rounded, while the sound E is unrounded. And that's about roundedness. So we spoke about the height, the sound is high, E. We spoke about 
uh, uh, advancement, whether it is front or central or back, and it is front, it's not in the center, it's not back. And we spoke about tenseness and laxity, and the sound E is tense, not lax, because it needs much muscular effort to pronounce. And we spoke about the roundedness of the lips, and the sound E is not rounded, because it, it doesn't make the lips rounded to pronounce it. And that's the sound E. Um, within consonants, we have something different. I've got a lot of consonant sounds in English. Within articulatory phonetics about consonants, we speak about three important areas. We speak about the manner of articulation, the place of articulation, and the voicing. In the manner of articulation, we have different uh, manners. The sound can be plosive or stop. It can be nasal from the nose. It can be fricative, it makes friction. It can be affricate, it makes some friction. And it can be glide, a glide, as it can be a liquid. And so these manners of articulation are very important to understand. Let's repeat them. Plosive sounds like p, b, t, d, and k, and g. So p, t, k, and b, d, g. These sounds are plosives because when you pronounce them, you feel that there's an explosion in your mouth. P. Um, sounds which are fricative, we have got eight. Eight fricative sounds. What are they? F and v, s and z, th and th, and sh and j. And so these are fricative sounds, and they are eight. We have affricates, we have only two, two affricates, ch and j. And as you can notice, the affricate is a combination between a plosive and a fricative. Let's repeat, a plosive and a fricative. The plosive is t, and the fricative is sh, and so we say ch. And then we have got the plosive is d, and then the fricative is j. And when we combine them, we say j. So these are both uh, affricates, not fricatives. We have got nasals. Nasals, we have only three. We have m, and n, and ng. This ng sound is a combination between the n sound and the k, or the n sound and the g. So the ng sound is a combination either between n and k or n and g. And that's a nasal. And also the sound m, it is a nasal. So we have only three nasals in English, m and n and ng. What about um, glides? Glides, we have two only also. We have w and y. W and Y, they are called glides or semi-vowels. They look like vowels, but they are not really vowels. Because they can't be uh, the center in the, in the syllable. They can't be the nucleus in the syllable. When we speak about a syllable, for example, because we have the onset and the nucleus in the middle and the coda. These are the three elements of a, uh, of a complete syllable. So, w and y, since they do not accept to be in the center of the syllable, that's why we don't call them full vowel. They are not complete vowel, they are semi-vowels or glides. And we have got also liquids. Liquids are two. L and R. L and R. And these are the, manner, these are the manners of articulation. So let's repeat the manners of articulation. We have got plosives or stops, fricatives, affricates, glides, and liquids, and nasals. So we've got six manners of articulation. Then within articulatory phonetics, we speak also about place of articulation, where the sound is pronounced, where the place. Of articulation 
And so we have different places of articulation. We have got bilabial, using the two lips, like p and b and m. We have got dental, using the teeth. You have got your tongue directly between the, the upper teeth and the lower teeth. Like, for, for example, th and th. And these are dental, from the word, you know, den, dental, dentist. As you can notice, dental means teeth. And we have got um, alveolar, alveolar sounds. Alveolar sounds is when you have your tongue, the tip of the tongue touches the alveolar ridge behind your teeth. Behind your teeth. Let's take an example. Like t and d. So you can notice that when you pronounce d and t, you find your tongue, the front of the tongue or the tip of the tongue or that place in the tongue touches the alveolar ridge just behind your teeth. And that's the alveolar. We have got also the velar. The velar is when the back of the tongue touches the soft palate. Touches the, the soft palate. And we have the example of k and g. When you pronounce k and g, they are velar sounds from the word velum, you know, the soft palate or velum. And so you can notice that the back of the tongue touches the soft palate, and that's alveolar. Um, we have got also labiodental. Labiodental, as you can notice from the word labio from lip and dental from teeth. And we have got the example of f. So you can see the lower lip touches the upper teeth. They touch. And that's labiodental. Both lip and teeth together. We have f and v. Both are labiodental. Um, we have got, normally that's it. And then we have got voicing. Voicing is about vibration of the vocal cords or the vocal folds. When you pronounce a certain sound, if the vocal cords vibrate, that means that the sound is voiced. If they don't vibrate, if, if they don't vibrate, that means the sound is voiceless. Let's take an example. Uh, p and b. Now certainly when you pronounce p, it's a plosive, it's bilabial. It is unvoiced or voiceless because the vocal folds do not vibrate. But the sound b, there's a certain amount of vibration in the vocal folds. Let's take a better example, like s and z, z. And you can notice, s is voiceless and z is voiced because there's a vibration in the vocal folds. So that is about phonetics. We spoke about definition of phonetics, the, types of, the three types of phonetics, and we spoke about articulatory phonetics. Within articulatory phonetics, we have got articulation or pronunciation of vowels, and we have got pronunciation of consonants. In the pronunciation, pronunciation of vowels, we speak about the tongue, the frontness of the tongue or the backness of the tongue or the centrality of the tongue, whether it is high or it is mid or it's low. And we spoke about also um, articulation of consonants. We spoke about place of articulation and manner of articulation and voicing. Thank you so much and goodbye.